Hey guys, it's Mama J. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving and I hope that you're having a fun-filled start to the month of December. So thank you for joining me during this very busy time. If you're new to the channel, I want to let you know that this is a channel where we talk about the passion for reptiles, amphibians, and beta fish, and I sure hope that you'll consider subscribing. Now, in today's video, I want to share with you a, a little bit about a new lizard that I have in the reptile room. Her name is Emma, and she's an emerald swift lizard. So, without further ado, let's get to Emma's story. Well, all of this started back earlier this fall when I was in one of our local pet stores. This is a store that I go in pretty much weekly to get uh, supplies and crickets and uh, mice, different things of that nature. But uh, this particular day, the sales associate called me over and said, hey, you've got to check out these new lizards that we got in stock. And I was like, well, sure, I need to come see this. Well, she pulled me over to this tank and showed me this small little lizard, must have been about six inches in length. And it looked to me like a little miniature green bearded dragon. It had all these little spiky scales and everything. And it was the cutest thing. Now she pulled this um, little lizard out of the, the case there and it was a male emerald swift lizard. Well, if you're like me, I at that point knew nothing about an emerald swift lizard. Well, she showed me that they have this beautiful green coloration on their back and the males on their stomach have this beautiful kind of teal blue throat to them. Well, normally these are very much an observational animal and uh, as the name says, uh, swift, they are quick. But this one particular little lizard allowed her to hold it for a short period of time and sort of stroke its little head. Well, that was just the cutest thing that I had ever seen. But I th got my supplies and kind of went about my day. Well, shortly after that, I thought, you know, that was really an interesting type of little lizard. I should do some research on those and just, you know, educate myself and learn a little bit more about them. That would be fun. That's something... I don't really know a lot about, so off we began. So I started doing research on these new emerald swift lizards that totally intrigued me. Now one thing that I found out is these lizards are native to Central America. You will see them in places like Honduras, Nicaragua, uh, Costa Rica, in places of that nature. They are a small lizard of about six to eight inches in length. And as I mentioned before, the males have a very beautiful green color to their back and they have a beautiful teal blue on their bellies. Now, a female is quite different in the fact that they, she has a very muted green color pattern and maybe a little bit of black splotches that you'll see sort of mixed in on her back, but her belly is solid white. So it's very easy to tell the difference between a male and a female emerald swift lizard. As for housing, you can house a single emerald swift lizard in something as small as a 10 gallon tank, though really uh, preferably it, a 20 gallon long would probably be the best option. Um, and if you house a pair or more, I would suggest, you know, going more like a 30 gallon tank. These guys are terrestrial lizards in the fact that they, they need a lot of space to be able to run around and they love to climb. They also have a very high humidity requirement of about 60% or more. Now these kind of lizards also require a UVA, UVB light um, to help them metabolize calcium. Um, they also really enjoy basking in the sun, and so offering them a heat source and a basking spot of about 90 to 95 degrees is really helpful. Now, these guys are insectivores, and what that means is that they eat nothing but insects. So, we're talking crickets and mealworms, dewy roaches, waxworms, and all of those good things. Now, let's get back to Emma's story. 
So it happened to be that I was back in the pet store one day and I noticed they had got in a female emerald swift lizard. This little girl was the cutest. She had this little sparkle in her eye and she would jump up on her log while she was basking in almost a flirtatious type of a response like, uh, you can't catch me, and she would take off running in the tank. Well, that's just endearing to me. As time went on, I would go back in the pet store every week to get my supplies. And of course, I always had to check on Emma. Um, I caught myself sort of thinking about her more and more and went home and would do more and more dedicated research on Emerald Swift lizards. I thought, this little girl is, is so endearing. I could just feel myself developing a bond with her. And so I thought, you know, this weekend, I'm going to go and bring her home. Now, about the time that I was making the decision that I really wanted to bring Emma home, I got a phone call from a good friend of mine, just sort of out of the blue. And she said, Mama J, you have got to help me with this lizard. Um, I saw this lizard at the pet store and I've watched her and she's the most beautiful little lizard. But today when I went in there, um, she's missing toes. She's starting to have labored breathing. Her foot is really swollen and I don't know what's going on. And I thought, well, I, I don't know what's happening. I, I just was in there the previous week. She seemed fine. I didn't know what was going on. So I've gotten to know the staff at the pet store pretty well. And so I, I texted the manager about it and I said, hey, I'm really interested in adopting this little Emerald Swift lizard. But a friend of mine had seen her and said that she had some foot issues going on. Are you aware of anything? Well, it wasn't long after that, she texted me back and she said, no, I'm not aware of anything going on. Well. I went about my day and before I knew it, she texted me again and she said, oh my goodness, you're exactly right. Um, it, it looks like that it's possible that crickets had been left in her tank overnight and for whatever reason, the crickets decided to make dinner out of her feet. Well, I was just heartbroken. Um, her foot was very swollen. Uh, the manager said it really looks like that she has an infection and we really will need to take her on to the exotic vet at this point. Well, I knew from past experience that they use my exotic vet that I actually go to and so I asked permission if it would be okay for me to go along for the appointment and, and meet the employee there and just be able to sit in and listen to the conversation because I knew that this was a lizard that I still wanted to bring home. And now that she had some very special circumstances, I wanted to find out what was uh, the best way that I could care for her once she got home. So the next day I met the store associate at our exotic vet office now, our exotic vet is just fabulous, and she has seen just a wide variety of animals, but even though she was very familiar with emerald swift lizards, this was the first one that she had actually seen in her practice. Now, she did confirm that Emma had an infection in her foot, and that was what was causing the swelling. Emma had lost several toes and also had several little abscess spots on her side. So boy, these crickets really did a number on this little girl. Well, I tell you, this is something that really has been an eye opener for me. Uh, I know myself, um, maybe something that I had taken for granted a little bit. Um, you know, I go in and I feed crickets sometimes during the day and we'll leave those in for the animal to eat throughout the day. And I do check my tanks at night to try to make sure that there are no crickets left behind, but occasionally there has been one. It, even though I've known the danger, I guess in my mind, I think to be able to visibly see um, how dangerous and how destructive a cricket can be um, was really eye-opening for me. So now that we knew kind of what was wrong with Emma and how to treat her, I was able um, to take her home at that point.
Now the store was wonderful and they paid for all of Emma's vet bills and I really have to um, commend them on as soon as they found out about the situation, they were very proactive in um, taking the animal to the vet and assuring that she had the medical care that she needed. When I got Emma home, I put her in a sterile type of a setup. And the reason that I did this is to try to maintain the environment just as controlled as possible. We started uh, doing the daily beta-9 baths for about 10 minutes each. And though uh, she was not exactly a happy camper about that, she did tolerate it well. And it did seem like that uh, the wounds were starting to look a lot better. And I thought that that was a very positive sign. Uh, she was eating for me, uh, she was pooping, but one thing that was concerning to me uh, over the course of a few days is that I still noticed that she had um, retractions in her rib cage. Um, it looked like that she was working too hard to breathe. Um, her ribs would sort of pull in a little bit as uh, she would breathe, which indicates stress to me of an animal. Now, I had her uh, basking temperature um, of about, ni about 92. Um, the rest of the uh, cage was kept at about a 60% humidity. And overall, I felt like that uh, the husbandry issues were pretty good. Um, so at that point, we started talking to the exotic vet more about is there something more that we should do? And I decided that it probably would be a good idea to go ahead and bring Emma back in for another checkup. So we brought Emma back in to the vet and uh, she looked at the wounds and everything that looked to be healing well, but the wrist was still very swollen. And so we decided it would be um, to Emma's best interest to go ahead and start a round of antibiotics. Now, what this meant was a series of 12 injections um, that I would do every 72 hours. And so I would take Emma out and give her a shot, and that's how we would administer the antibiotics. And hopefully this would keep her um, from having a more systemic type infection. So off I go with my little baggie full of shots. Uh, my husband just loves the fun things that he finds in my freezer on a daily basis. But anyway, um, Emma is doing really well right now. Um, we still have a few shots to go. Um, she's made great improvements. Um, you would never know that she has the disabilities that she does. She runs through the cage. She eats well. She poops well. She's very social. And overall, I'm so pleased with her progress. Now, I know you're thinking, gosh, this is just an incredible story. And, you know, what can we learn from this? What can we learn from this situation? Well, a couple of things. Number one, don't be afraid to be proactive on behalf of an animal. Um, in the case of my friend Maddie, I really think that she's the hero here. Um, because that she had... Um, the ability to speak up and to tell someone that she saw a problem, that put things in motion to help Emma get the medical care that she needed. Um, so thank you, Maddie. Uh, you are an animal hero. The other thing that I want to say is let's encourage each other. You know, this is something that is... Um, a tough situation is something that you hate to ever see an animal in and ever see an animal compromised but realistically none of us are perfect um, pet stores aren't perfect uh, hobbyists aren't perfect but I think it's important for us to if we do make a mistake if there's something that happens to do our best to make it right um, try to learn from that situation and try to move forward and do the best for the animals. That's really the bottom line. Thank you guys so much for uh, spending the day or the evening or the weekend or whenever you're watching with me. I greatly appreciate each one of you and I hope that you've enjoyed learning a little bit 
something new about an emerald swift lizard. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed hearing the background behind Emma's story, and I'll let you know how she's doing. As always, have a wonderful week. See you next time.